conventions. I fit right in. No one suspects an anthro vulture lurking amongst the man-sized teddy bears or marching in the fursuit parade. It could be anyone under that cute possum fursuit head. It could be a congressperson, or a celebrity, or even your dad. One thing you probably won't find is any sports-playing jocks. Today's movie brings us to the furry party. A real one. It's a lesson in taking the furry lifestyle just a little too far. Lone Wolf is a 2020 independent slasher film that centers around a killer driven howling mad. More than just a jammed zipper, he is stuck forever in his college football team's mascot costume when it was set ablaze by his bullying football team, filling him with evil. Or maybe he's undead or something. It's not very clear. Anyway, he swears vengeance against hot single furries in his area. Why is he taking revenge on furries? Why not say the sports bros who set him on fire? Because Lone Wolf is a bread in the bone fur exploitation film. Furries are used for shock value just as much as buckets of fake blood. There are a lot of creeps out there. That said, the filmmakers did bother to get real fursuits instead of simply renting cheap mascot costumes. I'm looking at you, Easter Bunny. This lends a morsel of visual realism to the otherwise absurd proceedings. These fursuits look like and probably are actual fursonas. It all plays out like a your character here slasher flick. The killer cuts full suits down to partials with the wearers inside. Our protagonist girl squad spend the film keeping the wolf at bay. A gruesome twist comes in the form of the killer keeping some of his victims alive to sew them into their fursuits in an attempt to make human furries. A truly terrifying prospect. While the premise is hackle-raising, the movie doesn't offer much to sink your teeth into. The camera work is laughable. You would be amazed at how many shots just cut the head off the subject and without even the decency to use a chainsaw. Even a volunteer student film crew should have known how to frame a shot. The film portrays furries as party animals, rather than social reject pariah dogs. The filmmakers at least know that furries host raves and conventions and house parties. Furries are not portrayed as negative, just a little weird, which is actually quite refreshing. <sighs> I identify as asexual, binary, and very, very gay. So this doesn't work for me. Sadly, the rest of the fandom details hold up about as well as a hot glued fursuit. It's tragic, really. They were so close. Furries wearing their fursuits 24-7 to school and traveling, calling their heads hats and bar hopping in full gear. Stop back at her dorm room to change. <laughs> now she wore a fursuit to class. I'm only here ironic. What? Well, I, uh... I heard it was an effective way to get laid. Dude, his persona is so hot. Gabby, you're gonna get him. Shut up. Well, if you don't want to, I certainly will. What's it then? Man, I cannot believe we just got kicked out of the fur con. <laughs> I can't remember ever seeing any furries around here before. We realized there was people when Deputy Carpenter picked up one of those fur head helmets and a head just fell out. Spun around on the floor and look right at him. The whole movie rests on the charred and fuzzy shoulders of our serial killer, but all comes tumbling down for the want of a furry cultural consultant. Imagine 
dear viewer, that you had been hired as this movie's furry fandom advisor. Oh, the horror opportunities that a real furry convention provides! A freaky cosplay that resembles the scarcely glimpsed slasher. Bystanders unable to understand the muffled pleas of a fursuiter who has just been stabbed. Overheating in costume only to take refuge in a blood-soaked headless lounge. The elevators breaking down at just the wrong moment. The crazed killer confounded by furries trying to roleplay with him. Oh, what might have been! This film is a how do you do, fellow furries, of fursploitation. It gets a couple of things right, but everything else is cheesy cringe. I can't get over the villain's motivations or lack thereof. He's crazy because footballers burnt him to cinders, but targets furries in hopes of sewing together his ideal mate or something? Like, dude, just buy some faux fur, quit being weird. This is not a healthy way to work through the trauma of being burned alive in your sport mascot costume. Lone Wolf won't suit everyone. I rate it rather picked over, not totally unappetizing to our demographic, especially compared to some of the other first exploitation on the menu. Great for a laugh for those in the fandom, but honestly, I don't think anyone would give this film much mind. For all of its faults, it's a cautionary tale about the flammability of artificial fur. Keep your polyester critters away from open flames, kitties, but especially avoid jocks, bros, and football players.